So this is just to give you a quick rundown on your Mark III. It should look pretty much the same. That's your solar panel. Obviously to maintain the extra angle of your solar panel. Ring gauge. Screws holding down your ring gauge tub. So if you ever need to go ahead and replace your reed switch, that's what you would use. Um, but most importantly, Solar panel screws. Ta -da. So make sure the top of the switch is off. Pushed away from us is generally off. I'm gonna take a pH two. As I do this with one hand. And pull off the solar panel. I'm just gonna put it down for a minute. As you can see, this is our solar panel. It is attached to the motherboard with this little clip right there. So that guy, so yet again, trying to do this with one hand. It's gonna come off right here. I'm just gonna gently pull. Should really give you no issue. Now in most units, you would have all four of these dip switch, all five of them rather, down. This is a uh, different frequency that's running on, so it is up. And as you can see, the status light is not on because we have turned off the unit. So next, I'm going to remove the mini air vane. For that, we generally need the rain buck facing us, and we need a pH one for that. So one second. Now the problem with this screw is it's super tiny. And so since it's so tiny, what's going to happen is you're going to end up dropping it if you're doing this on the roof. So you have to be very careful not to do so. Let's see, can we get on? We can, lovely. All right, so. Super small. Just gonna place that in there for right now. Next, I'm going to pull up the mouth. I'm going to disconnect the mouth. So as you can see, that's the plug that would go in there. This is the base of your map where it plugs in. And when, anytime you pull this off, you want to double check these connectors to make sure that they are all good and not corroded. Because if either or any of those go at any point or they become corroded, uh, the reed switches internally are probably bad at that point. Uh, and you will not get that direction, whichever direction it might be. One more second, because we are also going to do the humidity sensor, which is right here. And as you can see, I don't quite have enough to actually pull this up. So what we're gonna do is go to the bottom. And I can see I have a little extra right here. That's actually this wire. Comes through, comes down. I'm just gonna give it a little extra pull. Nothing crazy. I just need another half an inch. I'm gonna try and come back up here again. Hey, look at that, perfect. Awesome. So most of the RHTs are going to be like that. Uh, RHT stands for relative humidity and temperature. It's referencing this whole printed circuit board that we have right here. This one is obviously old. And the clip is in an atrociously bad spot. So I'm now going to replace that RHT. And these are the actual two pieces that are the sensors. That's your humidity and that is your temp sensor. 
And whenever you also do this at any point, you want to look for corrosion on those points. Connector up there, that capacitor, the backside. And those are things that are, are going to give you erroneous readings if you do not pay attention to them. I wonder why the weather station isn't working as well as it could. So, oops. A little zip tie. So you want to maintain a certain distance kind of down. So I'm going to say it's uh, roughly a half an inch from the actual cord. You're not quite that long. But the idea is to essentially have this right in where all these, sorry, all these shields are. Because there's actually holes in there, so you want the airflow to go in there and hit the sensor pretty uh, uninhibited, I suppose would be the best word. One second. Well, of course, you're not cooperating. This usually is not that difficult. See? So it's right around the neck of it. That's usually how you go ahead and do it. Oh, and also, when you pull these out, you want to check up here for corrosion to those pins. Because you can get it on both sides. And so as I do that, I'm just going to snip. Actually, I'm put that up a little bit more. There we go. Snip right there. Color it in. Going to reattach my nav. Okay, no, actually, before I do that, I am going to take that screw and just barely put it in. That's probably more than I wanted to, but it shouldn't be in too much. And the point is, just so you can see, sorry. There you go. Um, the point is, you just wanted to uh, inhibit the um, anemometer from going in if it's not lined up appropriately. As you can see, there's a little hole right there from where the screw was last time. And the point is to actually line it up with this slot. If you don't, what you do is you run the risk of breaking some of these uh, reed switches that are in there that actually dictate your direction. So I would like to know which direction my weather station is going in. And it should come up about right there if you do not have it lined up appropriately, it will not go all the way down. That's why you want the screw in partially. That's as far as I can put it down. But this way, it goes down like that. And we are good to go. At that point, we're back to the main part of the weather station. And I'm just going to flip the switch. Make sure that I'm getting that status light. And I don't know if you saw it a second ago, but it was blinking rapidly as it does when you first started. And that is pretty much it. All we're gonna do from there is attach the solar panel. Sorry, and that part goes facing down, the little ledge, the bump, the clip, however you'd like to put it. Take care of this. I'm literally just going to screw in all the four screws again with a pH 2, build set 2. If you're on, if you want to. and that's 